Welcome, dear friends. Today we are going to learn about orifice meter, venturi meter, rotameter, and pitot tube. So, for measurement of rate of flow of fluids, uh, various methods are used. Okay, so whenever a fluid it is used in any type of process, it is very necessary to measure the rate at which the fluid is flowing through the pipe. Okay, so it is required for process optimization. Also, it is required for audit and costing purposes. The methods which are used for measurement of the rate of flow of fluids, it can be classified as direct weighing or direct measuring method. Next method depends on the hydrodynamic uh, methods and it includes orifice meter, venturi meter, pitot tube and rotameter. And the third type or the third method is direct displacement method. So now, what, what involves in direct weighing or measuring method? The liquid flowing through a pipe is collected for a specific period at any point and it is weighed or then it or it can be measured and the rate of flow is determined from that point. Okay, so gases they cannot be determined by this method. Okay, only this can be used for liquids. So this is orifice meter. Now you have to see, you can observe here, this orifice meter, it consists of, uh, we can say it is a plate and it has got a vena contractor, that is a contraction area is provided. So we can say at this point, uh, the flow of the fluid is going to increase, the velocity is going to increase because the area through which the fluid is moving, it is going to decrease, okay? Now you can see here, uh, this portion is said to be upstream and this portion is said to be downstream. Why? Because the fluid is fl flowing from uh, this end to this end. Okay. Now what happens? First, initially, the fluid is flowing through this area. Okay. So here the velocity of the fluid is less because surface area is more. Okay. Now as the fluid it will move from this point, okay, the area is decreasing, the velocity is increasing as well as the pressure will be increased okay so at this point the pressure is lower at this point the pressure is higher okay so now what we have done we have fixed a simple manometer at two points one point is connected to the upstream and another point is connected to the downstream area okay and you can see here that due to the flow of the fluid there occurs a difference in height due to press or difference in pressure okay so now we'll see when the fluid it comes from this point it will move through this small um, contracted area and then it will forward, move forward okay so there occurs pressure difference and it is detected by using a manometer so the principle of orifice meter is as i told you it is a thin film and it contains a narrow and a sharp aperture when the fluid stream it is allowed to pass through a narrow constriction the velocity of the fluid it, it increases as compared to the upstream this results in decrease in the pressure head and the difference in the pressure it may be read from a manometer the velocity of the fluid at thin constriction may be written as mu zero is equal to c zero under root of 2g into delta h delta h is the difference in height which can be measured using a manometer c zero is a constant mu zero is velocity of the fluid at the point of orifice meter delta h can be measured using the manometer which is connected to a pipe section between uh, initial stage and the orifice section okay so the construction of orifice meter includes uh, it is considered to be a thin plate containing a sharp aperture through which the fluid is going to flow normally it is placed in between long straight pipes okay so for present discussion a uh, plate is introduced into a pipe and manometer is connected at point a and b now, how does it work? The orifice meter is recorded as the variable head meter. That is, it measures the variation in the pressure across a fixed constriction placed in the path of the flow. So, when a fluid is allowed to pass through the orifice, the velocity of the fluid at point B it is going to increase. So, pressure A at so pressure at point A will be higher as compared to point B. Okay. So, difference in the pressure it is measured by the help of the manometer then Bernoulli's equation is applied to point A and point B for experimental conditions okay so uh, by using this formula uh, where mu zero is the velocity of the fluid at orifice mu A is the velocity of the fluid at point A c0 it's constant so if it if the diameter of the orifice 
is one fifth or less of the pipe diameter, then mu a is neglected. So we get mu zero is equal to c zero under root of two g delta h. Okay. Now what is the application of orifice meter? Velocity at either point A and B it can be measured. The volume of, li of the liquid which is flowing per hour can be determined using this method. Now next we are going to see venturi meter. First we will see its principle. The venturi meter it consists of a two tapered sections in the pipeline with a gradual constriction at its center. So when the fluid stream is allowed to pass through the narrow throat the velocity of the fluid increases at the venturi as compared to the velocity of the upstream. So this results in decrease in the pressure head and this decrease in the pressure head um, uh, it can be measured using a manometer. So the velocity of the fluid at narrow constriction may be written as mu v is equal to c v under root of 2 g into delta h where delta h is difference in height and it can be measured by manometer c v is the coefficient of venturi meter mu v is the velocity of the fluid at the throat of the venturi meter okay so this is the diagram of the venturi meter okay now you can see here it consists of two tapering sections Okay, and these two tapering sections, they are connected at this point. So it is called as throat area. Okay, now this is upstream and this is downstream because the fluid is moving from this point to this point. Okay, so now uh, one, one part of the manometer is connected to the upstream and one part is connected at the throat area. Now what happens as the area over here is larger, the... Uh, fluid as it moves okay it has got less velocity because of this um, high surface area as the uh, fluid it will move in this throat area the area is decreasing and due to this the velocity is increasing okay now due to this increase in the velocity there occurs increase in the pressure okay and uh, so we can say the pressure upstream is lower as compared to the pressure in the throat area and this it can be determined using this manometer so we can directly measure the height okay if we measure the height we can use the formula and we can uh, substitute the value for height and we get the rate of flow okay so let us see the construction so we can say the venturi meter it consists of two tapered sections and it is inserted in the pipeline and it is placed in between long straight pipes the upstream uh, is normally shorter than the downstream cone okay the tapers they are smooth and gradual so it is in the downstream they are absent and hence there occurs no sudden uh, changes in the flow so a manometer is connected at point a and point b it works on the principle same as that of orifice meter okay so it is also said to be a variable head meter that is it measures the variable differential pressure across a fixed constriction placed in the path of flow. The velocity of the fluid is increased uh, at the throat due to constriction. It results in decreased pressure, okay, head upstream. So this is used to measure the rate of flow using a manometer. The equation for venturi meter, it can be written as under root of mu v square minus mu a square is equal to cv in bracket sorry under root of 2g into delta h whereas cv is the coefficient for the venturi meter mu a is the velocity of the fluid at the throat of venturi meter mu a is the velocity at point a so if the diameter of the small section is one fifth or it is less than the pipe diameter then mu a can be neglected and so the final equation becomes mu v is equal to cv under root of 2g into delta h now what is the disadvantage of this method it is highly expensive it needs technical expert it is not that flexible method and it occupies more space but it has got some advantages as well um, the power loss or we can say uh, losses are very less in this case uh, the head loss is negligible now what are the applications of venturi meter it is very commonly used for liquids, especially for water. It can also be used for measurement of gases. Now let us see what is a pipe out tube. 
principle is that the pi dot tube it consists of a sensing element okay with the small constriction compared to the size of the flow channel so when the sensing element is inserted at the center of the stream the velocity of the flow is increased and this results in decrease in pressure head the tube at right angle of the flow it is going to measure pressure head only the tube that is pointed upstream it is going to measure pressure head and the velocity head so the formula is delta hp is equal to mu square by 2g here delta hp is the difference in the head mu is the velocity of the flow at the point of insertion and r is the reading of the manometer which which using which we are going to measure the velocity head in meters okay now this is the diagram of a pipe out tube look this uh, this tube it is in direction with the upstream and this tube it is perpendicular to upstream so when the fluid is going to flow from this point this is upstream and this is downstream the uh, fluid when it comes in this tube at that time uh, its velocity will be increased and uh, due to that the pressure will decrease okay uh, so it can be read from the uh, difference in the pressure right so what we can say that here the here is uh, here the pressure is different and, and at this point the pressure is different and that can be measured using the simple manometer which is connected to the pi torque tube so this is the simple construction and working of the pi torque tube so uh, it is also known as insertion meter or insertion tube the size of the sensing element is small as compared to the flow channel the point of measurement it may be at the center of the channel one tube is perpendicular to the flow direction and other is parallel to the flow the tube the two tubes they are connected to the manometer so this is the construction now let us see the working the tube it is inserted in the flow as shown in the diagram the pi dot tube is used to measure the velocity head of the flow so in this tube velocity of the fluid is increased at the narrow constriction which results in decreased pressure head so the tube at right angles to the flow it is going to measure the pressure head only while the tube that points upstream it measures the pressure head and the velocity head the formula which we are going to use is mu square is equal to cv under root of 2g into delta h okay cvr is the coefficient of the pi dot tube what is the advantage of pi dot tube it measures the velocity at only single point what is the disadvantage pi dot tube itself is going to cause more disturbance eddies in the tube disturb the reading also it do not give average velocity for gases reading is very small for gases working on low pressure some form of multiplying gauges they have to be used now we will move to the last equipment and that is rotameter what now let us see what is the principle of rotameter rotameter is also known as the area meter as it is going to measure the area of the flow so it consists of a vertical tapered and transparent tube in which plummet is placed okay now this plummet it is free to move as the velocity of the fluid is going to increase or decrease the um, the distance which the plummet is going to travel it is going to vary okay so during the fluid flow through the tube the plummet it rises and falls because of variation of the flow so as a result it results in uh, the area of the annular space in between the plummet and the tube it varies the head loss across the annulus is equal to the weight of the plummet so the upper edge of the plummet is used as an index to note the reading on the tapered tube so this value indicate the flow of the fluid at that point so this is a, a, a rotameter so you can see this is it has got a tapered uh, vertical arrangement and this is the plummet or we can or it is also called as float okay so now you can see here the inlet for fluid is provided at the bottom and outlet is provided at the top so when the fluid will flow from this point what will happen due to the up thrust of the fluid this plummet it will rise but plummet it has got some weight of its own and after some time what will happen depending on the flow okay 
at at the certain point uh, the due to the weight of the uh, plummet the up thrust of the fluid flow and the weight it will be balanced and this plummet it will get stabilized somewhere here okay so now this area okay this is called as annular area okay so this area it is going to vary because you can see it is a tapered uh, structure okay so this area using this area it helps us to measure what will be the velocity okay now this vertical wall it is graduated and this is considered to be the index for measuring the uh, velocity of the fluid so the point at which this index is going to co coincide that is our um, value okay so uh, in construction we can say that um, the rotameter it consists of a vertically tapered and transparent tube with narrow end uh, and it is uh, located downwards okay and a plummet is placed here so a solid plummet is placed in the tube and uh, the diameter of the plummet is smaller than the narrowest part of the tube clothes or the plummet it is made up of either glass or aluminium or plastic the tube is usually made up of glass on which linear scale is given that is we have graduated that glass tube okay so during the flow of the plummet uh, the plummet is going to rise due to variation in the flow the upper edge of the plummet is used as an index to note the reading okay so now as the flow is upward through a tapered tube the flow it varies the plummet which is surrounded by the fluid it will rise and uh, fall depending on the rate of the flow the greater is the flow the higher the plummet will rise okay the lower is the flow uh, the lower it will be placed okay so um, here the pressure drop is nearly constant so during the fluid flow the area of annular space between the plummet and the tube varies so head loss across the annulus is equal to weight of the plummet the flow may be read using upper edge of the plummet as an index so the area is, has to be properly calibrated uses rotameter is used in chemical industries as bulk drugs in fermenters supply of air is controlled through rotameters and it is used for both gases and liquids at high and low pressure the advantage is that it op, uh, operator it has a direct visual index of flow reading it is satisfactory for manual control of processes for experimental work it does not require the condition that straight pipe should run before or after the flow okay so this was all about the equipments which are used for measuring the flow of any fluid um thank you for watching